So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. So in today's DAX Fridays, I'm actually going to show you a trick that you've been asking me <laughs> for the longest time, and it is how to do currency conversion in Power BI. I had to do it recently for a customer, so I said, how about I show you now what I know? Okay, so here's the thing. Casper de Jong, he works for Microsoft at the Power BI team, and he has a blog post that has the most elegant, simple, amazing solution that you'll is going to blow your socks off. Very, very easy to do, very easy to implement with something that otherwise you might think that is quite complicated. So currency conversion, I'm going to link to his blog post here at the end of the blog. I don't know why I don't see the images, but there are images. So at the end of the blog, there is here a link to download to the file. Go here. I will put the link down below so you can come here and download the file. You have to download the file from here. Okay. I'm going to do a few changes though to his file, but I'll show you so you know what to do and when to do it. So first of all, this is what we're going to do. This is his file. So. Here we have a date, the currency, the sales. I'll show you the table so you can see. So here we have a sales. So this company sales in all over the, the world. So it gets sales from, with different uh, currencies. And there is a exchange rate table. So you have the all the currencies and the exchange rate for the currencies, you know, for everything. So euros to SIEC and SIEC to euros and, you know, every day. And if, for example, I click here on euros, we will get euros. If I click on pounds, we will get pounds. If I click on US dollars, we will get US dollars. If I don't click on anything, it will get blank. We will fix that too, but probably in the next video, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so are you ready? This is what we're going to do. So it is changing dynamically, it's amazing. It's just so cool. Okay, let's go. So. The first change we're going to do is, this is our file. It has only two tables. And the first change that we're going to do is that he created all the supporting tables in uh, DAX. And as I show you on DAX Fridays 153, which was last Friday, I prefer to do the supporting tables in Power Query as much as possible. Go and check that video out to know why. So we're going to do that on Power Query instead of DAX. But if you prefer DAX, again, you go to this video and you have everything in there. So here we have the exchange table, exchange rates table, and then the sales table. What we need, a calendar, right? We always need a calendar. So this is my calendar, the one that you can just download at kerbal.com download center. So we're going to copy that and then we will modify it. So we are going to get, uh, New source, blank query, advanced editor, and paste it. And we're going to call this, let's call this same as he has exchange. This is calendar, right? So date. Do you recognize his file from where I'm doing? Um, so if you go up here, you see that the dates I have is from 2019 all the way to now. This is not what we need. What we need is we have sales from the 1st of January to the 1st of March. So we need continuous dates on that. So what we can do is we can grab the minimum value and the maximum value and create a calendar for that. So to do that, I've already shown you in another video. Let's do it very quickly. You go in here, min date equal to list min. It will give you the minimum fact sales. And I think it's brackets and then it's, oh, how is it called? <laughs> Let me see. It's called date, date. And then you put a comma and then let's see if actually I got it right. Minimum date. Yeah, it's given us a minimum date. Awesome. Let's go back and we're going to grab the max date. So max date equals to list 
max and then fact power query is case sensitive okay so be careful with that and then date and this should give us the max date let's close this with a comma max date mm. oh I got to I put too many parentheses so this should be like that now we have the max date so now that we have the min and max date we can go here to invoke function and here it is the min date so we call the variable min date and then duration date this is max date minus min date delete that one and then here it is duration one so now we should have from the first of january all the way to the first of march ding okay so checkpoint number one done <laughs> good so now we're going to load it and now we have a exchange rate which at the moment is hidden let's not hit hide that for the moment we have sales we have date and then we have a exchange date so date with date and date with date now we need to put a um this table the currency table needs to filter our exchange rate table right so if i would go into currency and put it into transaction currency so this is the currency that people buy on is going to say the relationship has a cardinality of many to many because i have i have let me show you i have euro multiple times i have us dollars multiple times on both tables so we're not allowed to do that what we need to do is to go back and I'm going to show you a very easy way to do this. You go here, right click, add as a new query. And this is going to be the, he calls it transaction, transaction currency. Let's use the same terminology so you can follow along his file too. And then you convert it to table. And then you remove the duplicates. And then you put it as a, text and you give it a better name right so this is going to be called transaction currency there we go so now if we close and apply and we load this table now you see that we are we have created what is called a bridge table which means that instead of creating a many-to-many -many relationship we're just creating a many-to-one many to one and want to many so we can still have relationships between those and we have it in here fantastic so now we can go currency transaction currency and now we need a external table for the report currency that we're going to use as our filter so we're going to go back again and then we are going to get the report currency from here. You can get it from anywhere. And then you can go to table. You can guess like where are, where there are, um, or maybe you can hard code it as you like. But if it comes more uh, exchange currencies, then this will do it automatically, right? So let's do remove duplicate text and give it a good name, which he calls it uh, report currency report and this is the the currency you want to change it to close and apply and it's going to load here we have it and then it got it by itself like, oh awesome report because it's called the same so power <laughs> question hmm, maybe there is a relationship in here yes that is so um now we have our model ready. So what we need to start doing is a little bit of DAX to get this thing started. So we are going to go in here. First, we need to have the value, the, the factor value for each row. So what it does is he goes into 
so great a new measure calls it transaction exchange rate and th this will be the minimum value of factor and then we have what he calls total sales we have a total sales already unfortunately so we're going to call it exchange total sales maybe total sales and this is if has one value for the report currency. This is what is going to be our slicer, you'll see. So if something has been selected, not the fact is changed. The report, our slicer, report currency. There you have it. Then some X of the fact sales, and then we get the total sales. Total sales times, this is where we do the currency conversion, which is the exchange rate. Let's watch the magic happen. So this is the report currency. First of all, this you don't need that. This is the bridge table. Well, depending on what you do, you might need it. But for now, no. So I don't want that either. Hide. So those are the only ones I need. And then this, we're going to do a filter. So we put our new total sales measure in here. And then it says, if it is zero, oh, it's, that won't be good because when it's dollar, no. Thank you, but no, exchange, it shouldn't be currency. Uh, it's now on, uh, yeah, no currency. Thank you. I, I just want to have a say decimal number. So, or a whole number maybe. You <laughs> choose which one you want to have. But you can see here, Euro. So it's not doing anything. Obviously the exchange rate for Euro is one. And then it has the great return for the 1st of January. This, it, it goes to the table to our, um, fact exchange rate stable and it goes 1st of January it gets the currency that we have reported here and then it says here okay what currency is in here and then it gives us the factor the minimum value is basically saying whatever is on that row and if there is more than one give, give us the minimum there is not going to be more than one so that's the one that it should get and then it multiplies it and then you can see here it works Beautifully, so simple, so easy, so gorgeous. Now, there is one thing here. If I remove the selection for the report currency, it's not going to give us anything. It's going to give us blank. There are different ways to show it. You could probably, you know, before we had to put some text that says, okay, like select a currency. For example, on the, here on the measure, you can say, if one of these has been selected, give us the sales, otherwise, you could actually go here and put currency, select currency. So you actually warn the viewer that they have to take an action in order to see it, right? Select currency. And then if I, they pick something, it gets calculated, but there is a better way to do it. And I think it's a pity to embed it in this video because it can be used for anything. So I'm going to do the next Tax Fridays show you the solution for this so you can use it and find it when you search on Google. So this is amazing, isn't it? So go to Casper's blog, send him some love, amazing solution, and I will see you again on Monday as always. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, his file, this file, you get his file, okay? So go to his blog post, download it from there, and play with it. It's elegant, beautiful, solution. It's so simple that it's just gorgeous. Stop talking, stop talking. Have a great weekend, Friday, and I'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye.